I've always been a supporter of, of independent film. Um, I always make a point, if I can, to work on, you know, micro-budget projects, indie films, anything, student films, shorts. If I get lucky enough to get a chance to, to work on a, a really good indie film that's got um, enough legs under it to kind of tell the story properly, then I, I count myself really lucky. Um, I guess I met Mina many, many years ago um, through the, the film circuit, and um, she she tells me that she's always wanted to work with me. So I take that as very flattering because I kind of look at it as the other way. I want to work with these great auteurs and these great filmmakers. But she said she always wanted to work for me, was waiting for the right thing. And um, I was away filming a very different movie, the, the new Chucky film. And um, they wanted to see me while they were casting this, and, and I couldn't make it. And finally, I came right from the airport and met her and sat down um, and we worked, worked some scenes for this character, Jonathan. And um, then I, yeah, I got the green light and it was good. So from, it was, um, that's literally exactly how it happened. Um, but I guess many years of working as, a, as an actor and her as a filmmaker and her making great things and me, and me finally getting the chance to work in it. And here we are. It's gonna be funnier than people think. People are going to laugh more than they think. And uh, because Mina is a goddess, they're going to also find themselves choking up and maybe crying at times, too. Um, it's, um, so it's going to be a little more bittersweet or a little more poignant or a little more, you know, uh, tear-jerking than, than people might think, too. Um, also, they're gonna, might be, the audience might be surprised to see that the two main protagonists or two main characters are seniors. So we rarely see stories of, I don't want, I hate to say elderly, but of like, of people in that demographic. Even in like my age, like you'll see Nicole in a lot of stuff or younger people in a lot of stuff, you know, whether it's like Hollywood hits or TV shows, you know, traditionally it's, those are what things are written for. So this movie has protagonists in their 60s who are immigrants to Canada who don't speak English that well. Um, and there's, there's, um, so when you start with that, then you know there's not gonna be, and there's no, it's not in World War II, and there's no zombies, and there's no car chases, and uh, you know, so you gotta, that's different too, right? You wanna start there, and then work your way down with the family members, and then what the stakes are, and then you realize that what they're going through is the same thing that my parents maybe went through, and what these people are going through is what I went through, or what I am going through, or I know what that is, and I, I can tell that thing about when couples are feeling that way, and when children are looking at their parents that way, and vice versa, and um, all of a sudden, I think, at some point during the film, who, the audience is gonna realize that, oh man, these people are just like me. Oh man, we're all the same. And I think then the movie's then the movie is like succeeded in, in one really strong way. Um, and then I hope people like the writing, I hope they like the acting, I hope they like everything else, but I think they're gonna be affected by it um, on a real personal, straight, down to earth, hum, humane, human level. Everyone has a voice, artists might have a voice, and film has always been something that has been, not for the, the privileged, but the, the the accessibility to make quality film, say even 20 years ago, was you know was prohibitive. You know, it was a real lottery to be able to get that chance. I know I've produced independent film. I'm written independent film, and trying to get your movie made, like the hoops you got to jump through and the the your, the amount of your soul you got to sell, um, just it's a struggle. So when when you get the chance to help somebody tell their story, I think it's your responsibility. As, as somebody, with a craftsperson working in this business, whether you're rigging lights on, a, on, a, on, on Supernatural and, uh, or, you're, or you're acting on what, I mean, whatever it is, it's kind of our responsibility, I think, as filmmakers or as film people to um, help do favors so people can, can make their projects. Otherwise, what's our identity as, what would Canadian film identity or television identity be, it would, you know, so. 
I have to do it. I insist on doing it. I'm glad you wanted to highlight the, the Canadian stuff and make sure that we, we don't lose our voice and do, don't lose our sight. We got a tough enough time as it is being almost Hollywood North, well, exa literally Hollywood North, and then within Canada itself, East, East like uh, Quebec has their star system, and they were so supportive of their content, of their voice, of their heritage, of their film, of, of their television. Western Canadians tend to be either really, really pushing for it and supporting and digging for it, or really just work sort of like a larger American audience. And so the hot shows in Canada are probably the hot shows that are in the States, and the hot music musicians in Canada are probably the hot musicians in the States, you know. So Quebec is different from that. They love their stuff, right? And they'll know what else is going on outside the world in the U.S. But Western Canadians, filmmakers, television, TV artists, and you know, it's, you know, it's hard. It's hard for us. So we need more guys like you to, to, to you know, shine the light.